One of the biggest issues I've seen in sports media surrounding the offensive line position is the idea that bigger is better. When you look at offensive linemen and consider that their jobs are to displace and move people, in theory, you do certainly want the biggest, strongest guys on the field up front leading the way for your shifty skill players. The irony is that number one, bigger isn't always better on the offensive line. Number two, of all the positions on the field outside of kicker, punter, long sniper, and to an extent quarterback, the offensive line position is the most actual skilled position given that none of the stances, techniques, or moves that offensive linemen employ are natural. Even, even defensive linemen isn't as skilled as an offensive line, which may make some of y'all feel a way, but to be an offensive lineman takes a great deal of know-how, knowledge, technique, timing, explosiveness, and to a lesser extent than people realize size. When you look at Alejandro Villanueva, you see a mountain of the man standing at a daunting 6 feet 9 inches, tipping the scales at around 320 with a naturally insane wingspan based on his height alone. In his career, he's managed to accomplish a lot for a former tight end, converted defensive end, converted to offensive tackle, who at one point was barely on a roster. Now, after seven seasons, he's moved on be to be the de facto replacement of Baby Zeus, Orlando Brown Jr., for the Baltimore Ravens. But is this a one-to-one -one replacement? Is he himself a solid blocker that could slash should help the Ravens, the AFC historical rival of the Steelers, win championships? In this film review, I hope to answer this question in three parts. Number one, addressing the good attributes he brings to the game of football on film. Number two, addressing the major flaws in, of his game on film. And there is a very thorough discussion to be had there. And number three, addressing his background and potentially the calculus that the Ravens had when determining that they wanted him to be part of their next two upcoming seasons and hopefully ultimately winning some championships. The 2020 football season is the best film available to determine Mr. Villanueva's skill set. With six seasons in his rear view up to this point, his best seasons on paper were in 2017 and 2018 when he was able to make the Pro Bowl. The reality is the Ravens are only going to get the best version of Alejandro Villanueva available and that isn't so much from a physical standpoint and explosiveness, but more from a knowledge and experience standpoint. The games reviewed for this were chosen based on the opponent's importance and time in the season. The first game that was chosen was the Giants because it was early in the season, even though they are an NFC opponent. And the next game that was chosen was against the Broncos, also because it was er early in the season, and they are a potential playoff opponent for the Ravens in the postseason. The Bills were also chosen for the same reason as the Broncos, but they were a little bit later in the season. And the other games that were chosen were the AFC North opponents, with the final game being reviewed in great detail. My intention with these chosen opponents was not to dismiss other games and other opponents because in football, every game you play matters. So does every play you play. And if you're lucky, you might know when your last snap is, and you might be able to go out on your own terms. With all of this in mind, let's get into the case of Alejandro Villanueva. Welcome to Lines Now. Against the Giants very early in the season, this is a decent pass pro by Alejandro Villanueva. So if we look at the wide view, we can see the Giants come out in a look that isn't un unheard of in the National Football League. Now, different people have different ways of calling this thing, but it's kind of like a 3-4 diamond. And I'll get into why I call it that in a second. But if you look and see, you have not... Now you have five people up front. You have an actual linebacker. This is a nickel, a safety, and a safety, and a corner, and a corner. So a normal nickel look would have two linebackers here, but now one of them is actually playing down the line of scrimmage. So if I was an offensive lineman or a betting or just an offensive player, I would look at this with some suspicion. Because as you can see, you have only one middle linebacker in the middle. And if you see a look like this, a lot of there are a lot of blitzes and a lot of, and a variety of things that can come out of this look. Now, in terms of personnel, depending on how you think about football, you might identify him as a linebacker, or he might identify himself as a linebacker, and same with him. So if that is the case, just for hypothetical reasons, 
then that would make this actually a 3-3 defense. Given that this is one, two, three down linemen, this is one, two, three linebackers. And the rest of them are defenders. However, given the way this is actually set up, it's really more like a 3-4 defense just based on the way they're playing. Now, there's a lot of semantics that come with that, but the bottom line is, if you're any one of these people up front, including this person right here, you're looking at this defense and you're thinking blitz. You're thinking either all five of these guys are coming or they're going to do some crazy send this guy around blitz or something like that. But it's an empty pass set. So realistically speaking, maybe not all five of these people are coming. Realistically speaking, it might just be him. He's probably going to drop, especially if you know that this is actually a regular inside linebacker or outside linebacker. This is Leonard Williams, who tends to play kind of in this area somewhere between here and here is the environment in which this player lives and i think this player does as well and usually this guy plays pretty down the middle he's more or less where he's supposed to be so across the front you have nine nine you have a three you have more of a four eye and you have a shade he's shaded on the center if you're Alejandro Villanueva you're first thinking this guy is probably going to be your what ends up happening on this play is nothing miraculous but this is something to look forward to so everybody's probably prepared that's why James Conner was called in for pass pro or at least increased protection snap of the ball and they just go out for a route well he drops and he actually just follows the tight end which means only three defenders are actually rushing. So, let's look at the left tackle. He does a good job of noticing that he drops, and he just picks up Leonard Williams, works with his guard, and you have a nice, beautifully clean pocket for their quarterback to make plenty of decisions and throw the football. It'd be wonderful if you caught it for the Steelers. And this simple, this simple pickup and then the move of then hitting him with his arm of God move. One punch man deal. Him doing that is good and bad depending on how you look at it. I would say it's actually pretty damn good. Just the, it's good at doing his job. Do I think his pass pro is all that great? Do I think he's standing straight up? Whatever. I mean, he picked up a he picked up a slant. He wasn't going to stay on the shoulder of the guard. He was going to come straight to the outside perimeter, try to pass rush. And this pocket is about as good of a pocket as any quarterback in the pros could ever hope for. So, decent job by Andrew B. in the way. This play comes from the Steelers contest versus the Denver Broncos relatively early in the season. Um, this is also relatively early in the game. We're going to see Mr. Villanueva's favorite one arm, Ombre de Dios, or hand of God, arm of God, if you will, on full effect. So the edge rusher here just gets himself in a, in a position where he just completely out leverages himself. And all Alejandro Villanueva has to do is just stab him and he's doomed. That's it. And the worst part about it is. Like he tries to, he tries to like fight back in and tries to make the play, but he can't because he gave up his inside of his body and he rushed so far upfield and he's completely out of the play. He's completely removed himself out of the play, and that is purely because Alejandro Villanueva has mastered the art of timing that move out almost to perfection. Because when it works, and it works, it works great and it works wonders, and it's. It's a hell of a move, I'm not going to lie to you. There is a way to beat it, but it's it's one of those situations where when you get in the situation, it's really hard to get out of. But if you know what you're doing, you can beat the move. Um, matchup from Steelers versus the Bills. This is pretty early in the game. Second play of the game, I believe. Second play on offense for the Steelers. The biggest thing about this play is that it really comes down to decent fundamentals. At least not fundamentals, but just having a good football intelligence by Alejandro Villanueva. 
and the Bills are one of the more prolific defenses in all of football, and they are projected right now to be potentially the best defense in football this coming season. The Bills are going to come out in the nickel set, four down linemen. This is a nickel back, defensive back, corner, corner, two linebackers, safety and safety. Steelers, they're going to have a tight end to the left, running back, three receiver set. This is one of the preferred sets, again, they come out in all the time. There's going to be a jet sweep where Chase Claypool is going to come across the formation. I believe that's Chase Claypool. Yep. So he's going to come across the formation. Now this is man-to-man -man coverage. Do I think, personally, I don't know if this is the exact play I would have called in this given that it was man, but I understand the logic behind it. So what you're going to have up front, you're going to have what is going to be a nine. He's definitely playing outside of the tight end. This guy, Ed Oliver, is a four eye. You're gonna have solid one technique here. He's gonna be kind of a wide five. One of the Edmonds brothers is linebacker. And as Chase Claypool comes across the formation, Ed Oliver's gonna slide down more in the gap, probably playing more of a three. And the only, again, the biggest reason why identifying these positions up front, it does determine and change how people block. So, Based on the running back's motion, this linebacker is going to step forward, play the play the run. He sees that he's backside, so maybe he's standing still. He's just going with the motion because that's what he's coached to do. And this actually looks like some real deal combobulation at first, but as you see it play out, it doesn't really work in that way. So you have a good solid double team between the left tackle and the left guard off the rip but because it's a sweep this end man is going to come unblocked because ideally he's chasing down the running back motion he's going to get leverage over here but what really is good is that the left tackle gets leverage on the linebacker who sees the, who realizes that it's a jet sweep and not a regular dive i mean this is pretty solid it's pretty solid football intelligence right here. Now, instead of actually trying to block anybody or do anything, he just set himself up in position to make a decent block. So when he decides to come back, he's going to have to run through Alejandro Villanueva. So that's pretty, pretty good decision by him. He's able to get a decent piece of him. Unfortunately, again, I don't know if it was the best play call in the world. If they were really trying to get a lot of yards, but Assuming that this was like zone look and not a man look, I mean, you're, you're talking about a good running lane and Alejandro Villanueva would have got enough a piece of this guy that your ball carrier could have made a really good play. So, that's just the truth. You don't have him in man, you still are going to have a pretty decent game. So, football intelligent, decent job on reverse, jet sweep. Good job by Alejandro Villanueva for putting his body in the right position. Technique is another conversation altogether. This is another pass pro example, just from late, a little bit later in this game, about how Mr. Villanueva's contribution to the pass games are pretty important. This is ideally what they want any tackle to do. He comes off the edge, and he's able to just push him behind. Solid pass block, solid pass play. Nothing is ridiculously special about that, in my calm objective opinion, but things like that are what get a lot of coaches excited. They get a lot of people in general excited. It's really a big reason why Mike Tomlin really got excited when he first saw him, because this is ideally what he would want to do, make this defender run the hump. Another reason to be excited for Mr. Villanueva on Pass Pro. This play, actually occurred later in the first quarter I believe this is their second drive and this is going to be a run play to the left this is out of an under center look this is actually a one two three tight end ish look and I say ish because one of these guys actually because this gentleman right here actually occasionally lines up an H, H back this is Chase Claypool uh, at the time was a rookie receiver 
and this is the base defensive personnel or what looks like base defensive personnel for the Bengals where they have one two three four five guys up front this is a great anti-run formation I mean you have five down linemen man to man across the board you have one two linebackers you have corner corner and a safety roll deep and this is a safety coming down so when you watch the actual end zone view you can see as this gentleman rolls down to get to maybe set up a blitz you actually have what is a I will call him a nine he's definitely a nine he's also a nine but both of these guys this guy whoever's played over here has rushed the entire time and this guy may whoever plays here occasionally drops just throughout this course of this game is what I've seen this guy right here he's definitely splitting the difference between a four eye and a three same right here you have the exact same thing going on and he is a head up they are definitely just trying to clog the gaps and just trying to stop the run at least for the Bengals the linebackers are cheated over a little bit because this guy is not directly in a gap this guy's not directly in b gap or he's not even in a gap and the safety is coming down potentially fill in the c gap right here he is d gap b gap for sure somebody's a gap somebody else's a gap he is obviously b gap he is obviously c gap so that's just run discipline and how they're looking up front now it'd be worth noting that the Steelers and really a lot of teams don't have a true fullback like they they might have one on the roster but these days they kind of take up roster places and most of the time they teams don't really run the ball as much they use short passes or RPOs as alternative to runs the Steelers are no exception and they tend to run that three receivers one tight end look a lot but every once in a blue moon, you'll see a tight end or an H-back or another tight end back up and fill in and play the role of a fullback who might pull, kick out, who might lead up or who might do other things like that, misdirections, things of that nature. So strictly looking at the left tackle as we watch this play develop. I don't like his feet personally. I mean, I don't, I don't, I've never really known of anybody to be coached like that, to just shuffle one way or another. But this is overall going to be a good block by Mr. Villanueva because what he does, despite being ridiculously tall and an absurd mammoth of a man, he does ultimately, he does ultimately work with the guard and he does chip this three technique or ambiguous three technique for I and allows the guard to completely take him over and he is able to work up to the front side linebacker creating an otherwise good running lane for the running back who doesn't take full advantage of it in my opinion and try to go back and watch that again because it might have happened a little quick so again right here he is tall as hell like he is playing high as a kite I mean, and he's six foot nine I don't care like you you can't be six foot nine and play at best at six foot six. It doesn't it doesn't really work that way. You need to get your pads down. You need to get leverage. But having the good instincts of knowing to chip this guy, send him this direction, and then staying a square and maintaining outside leverage, specifically aiming for this half of this linebacker's body, is what's going to set up a good opportunity because then. The running back, if he really wanted to, would be able to cut back in here or at least be able to cut up field knowing that he's not going to, that this next defender who isn't, who isn't blocked, maybe he's coming from way back here or maybe he's coming from way back here or is a safety. But either way it goes, these people have a much larger distance to go than this guy. So that is overall a good block and good instincts by the left tackle. Hands are terrible. 
he loops his hands. Frontside blocking is terrible, but what do you do? This is a second and nine. So the Bengals, personnel-wise, are going to still come out in a nickel personnel. All right, because if you look right here, this is actually a linebacker. This is also a linebacker. And even though he's a stand-up player, he's actually been a stand-up edge rushing player the entire time. Then you have obviously the corner, corner, one high safety. Well, he's been one high uh, by himself, but this is also another safety, and this is also the nickel player. So when we get to the end zone view, you can see better who is who in the zoo. So as everybody walks down to adjust, you have Dre Kirkpatrick, it's right here. And you also have another safety right here. And these two are the actual linebackers. Now, for context to remember, this was a gentleman who was playing more of a wider technique earlier right here. He normally plays somewhere out here or even out here. This, is, this guy has been here the entire time, just rushing off the edge and just maintaining C-gap leverage. This guy has been played more of a more of a shade, a one, or maybe a three. And this guy has played about here most of the time anyway. But based on this look alone, you can tell that something is afoot, that the defense is gonna be doing something different than what they normally do. This guy doesn't normally rush. Not that he doesn't blitz, but if he rushes, he might come from the middle, but not just off the edge. So something is up. So as an offensive personnel, offensive lineman, you can tell that there's gonna be maybe some type of slant, given where he's lined up, given that he's coming. But you can, again, discern even better. It's probably a slant this direction, and maybe he's coming around or he's coming around or maybe safety fire something like that but these are the this is the calculus that goes into for playing this position and playing offensive line and putting the other's plays you have a tight end left with eric ebron you have a receiver motioning out and going out wide and this is going to be a draw play to the left this is another good thing that our left tackle does pretty that I think he does pretty well and he normally does this is one of his big staples and his big moves snap the ball good instincts and what he does he uses the arm of God or arm bar or hombre de Dios since he's span he's actually a Spaniard and he speaks fluent Spanish so this is one arm just pushing this guy out the way. Eric Ebron has a good shot to the guards, otherwise taking a decent path, gotten on the front side linebacker. Marquise Pouncey is set up to where he can work back to this uh, backside linebacker here who did decide to drop. The rest of these guys have kind of moved himself out the play and James Conner has a clean alley run through about as clean as you can get at least on the initial start of the play that's some fascinating technique by the slot receiver but this is this is already a good setup and this is good great instincts by the left tackle because as this play begins to develop he has to honor and see that this guy potentially could come and if he did come that would be his dude but within two steps of the play, he recognizes that, okay, he's dropping, which means somebody, something else is coming. And he works with the guard. Guard works, picks up the blitzing linebacker. And this player ends up having to play the C gap. And he just takes him. And he doesn't do more than this. Just one arm stab, pushes him outside. He's six foot nine. Like there's, that's just the truth. He is six feet nine. He has ridiculous wingspan, and there's not a lot that this gentleman can do 
to stop it. So, no matter what gain of the play was made by the running back here, it doesn't matter what else ended up happening or not happening. Our left tackle did a pretty decent job of creating opportunity using his instincts and his skill set to his advantage. So, more power to him. This play is relatively early in the game. Uh, one of the plays on the first drive on the first matchup, Steelers versus the Bengals. And to really see the full spectrum of this play, this actually is going to be a run play. Defense comes out. This is actually a nickel personnel where you have a one, two, three, four down lineman. You have one, two linebackers. This right here is actually a defensive back. This right here is also defensive back. You obviously have a one high safety, and you have corner and a corner. So this is a and this is a very normal look throughout the game of football at all levels. And the reason is too, if you look at the Steelers, they have one tight end and one, two, three receivers and one running back. So. There's a lot of speed on the offensive side of the ball, so naturally you want to have some speed on the defensive side of the ball. This ends up being a run to the left, offensive left, and we can see how this actually plays out. So up front, you also have a relatively tighter five. Right here, you have, I would call him more of a shade. You can say he's a gap player, but I would I would say he's more on the center than he's on the guard. This guy is definitely on the guard at three, and he is a he is a clear nine. He's outside of the tight end, and mind you, the numbering system. People who don't readily understand or don't readily know these things will just go and focus on the right side since there's a tight end. On the center, you have a zero. Outside shoulder is a shade. Inside shoulder, the guard is a one. Head up on the center is a two. Outside shoulder is a three. Inside shoulder of the tackle is a four. I. Head up is a four. Outside shoulder of the tackle is a five. Inside shoulder of the tight end is a seven. Head up is six. And outside is a nine. That numbering system seems kind of goofy. However, it does make more sense, especially when you're talking about rushes and blitzes. So. We're just going to go with this. So you have a definite nine. And this gentleman throughout the game right here, he's played between a wider five, more of a nine look. Because in calling him different numbers in different positions does tip off maybe where they're going. If he normally plays wider than this, and you might say, hey, I had a nine, then that's normal. It means he's probably just going to maintain C gap leverage in this case because you have the gaps being A, B, C, and D gap in this case, and you have A, B, and C gap because there's no other offensive player out here or for a gap for the running back to run through. So if he's so if he normally plays a little bit wider, then that means that he's just he's the C gap defender. And if he plays a little bit tighter, that means maybe something else is coming. In this case, he's a little bit tighter than he has normally been, but it's also early in the game, so it's worth actually watching. And the assumption that Mr. Villanueva makes on this play is that he's going to step outside and rush up the field, and what he's going to do is his long arm technique, where he just pushes him up field, allowing a pulling tackle to work through and either kick out or play for the play side linebacker. All of these people are gonna just be blocking back. He's gonna be working down, working up, and the running back should have cut inside. I don't think it was a good decision by the running back on this play. But if we watch Mr. Villanueva, this is actually something to be excited about. So he steps and immediately this edge player is jumping inside and it is not even a mystery that he is jumping inside he adjusts and he just washes them completely down the formation just sends them right into all the pile 
So now with the front side with the front side guard working up to the backside linebacker, this tackle really only has this man to worry about. And I understand why the running back bounced it out the way he did. He would have been better off trying to follow the tackle's block a little bit more, but this is a defender, like a defensive back, not some linebacker or somebody slower. So time was of the essence in this moment. So it made sense. But otherwise, pretty good instincts by Mr. Villanueva. Steelers, uh, second matchup on the season against the Browns. This is the game before the playoff game. I chose this play because this is about as good of a fit as I've seen as far as run fits goes of Alejandro Villanueva. Well, again, all, most of these guys are backup players, um, at least on the Steelers offensive line. The interior three are all backups. Quarterback is a backup. The tight ends are backups. But the starting tackles are both still playing. So for this situation, Steelers are going to go with under center, run running back, tight end to the le offense's left here. They're going to run a, their favorite three receiver set as they normally run. Steeler, the Browns are going to run their two linebacker set. Both of those are actually linebackers. He's actually a safety or nickel. I can't remember which one he was, but it's not really important for the context of this play and what I'm trying to show you. So this D lineman lines up in more of a four eye. And this D lineman lines up in more of a one. He's kind of a wide five but tighter than normal and he's somewhat of a head up six this is carl joseph playing deep free the reason why i like this play by alejandro villanueva because it's just a regular run zone to the right or just regular run to the right and he's going to take over this block allowing his guard to work up probably work backer to backer if this backer committed this gap, he would have him. Otherwise, he's working this guy right here. And Alejandro Villanueva does a pretty decent job of setting that situation up. His guard doesn't do a good job of recognizing the play and understanding where it's going. He just sees the linebacker and he just tries to go get him. But again, for context, he is the backup. He's played throughout the season, but he's also normally a backup. But at least he knows he's trying to work for this linebacker. He's eyeing here for any stunts or blitzes, but he's really trying to work to this man right here. This is a pretty big indecision by the two guards, and they both ironically kind of get in the linebacker's ways. But the fact of the matter is, for Alejandro Villanueva, is that he is able to get some movement up front. Number 96 here is actually getting pushed back in addition to getting overtaken and completely washed out of the play. Giving this dude enough ambiguity and not really sure what the hell he's doing, and he genuinely has no clue what he's doing, but there's enough commute confusion between these two, and this guy just happens to be in the right position, and they both, these two backups, end up converging on this guy, and he just gets lost in the shuffle which is, again, pretty funny. But Alejandro Vier in the way of his block is body position-wise where he would want to be on this play. It's otherwise doing everything you would want to do. He maintained leverage. He got him off the ball. You can say he may have pushed him in the play a little bit, but in all honesty, as far as I can tell, the way this play is supposed to work, that's about as good as it's going to get from Alejandro Vier in the way. I think this is a fun play to look at. This is actually a pretty solid block. And it, again, technique is completely out the window for Alejandro Villanueva at this point in the video. But I will say the things to really look forward to and be excited about, I mean, are situations like this. And this is something that really does matter. So as you can see, Steelers have acquired no points at this point. And the Browns have gotten seven. This is also relatively early in the game, but this is playoff football. Every game, every play matters. So we can take a look at the game look at this from the wide angle. I mean, this is this is classic football. This is some old school in the ground, in the dirt, getting ugly football. Alright. 
So as you can see, I mean, they are crowding the line of scrimmage. It's third and one. They got one high safety. They have a corner, another corner, and their linebacker slash safety is Carl Joseph. He's down in the box. I'll call him a linebacker for this context because that's how they use him. Another linebacker here. You have one, two, three, four, five people up front in the stands. I mean, this is a obvious short yardage situation, and this is also the Steelers are employing their fullback, H-back type guy, Derek Watt, going to make his playoff debut, or carry that I saw at least. So this was a game. This is a successful first down. Let's go ahead and take a gander at how this actually played out. Brown's trying to adjust. So one of these, like I said, this guy's normally a corner. This is Carl Joseph. He's, no, he's actually safety slash linebacker type. And like I said, I'm very glad he's back with the Raiders. This is a true linebacker, true linebacker. And then you have, oh my goodness, Adrian Claiborne. As the five technique, you have a three technique, you have a zero, you have a three technique, and you have a head up. This is a six in this case because they have a heavy tackle. So you have heavy tackle, tight end, fullback, and tailback with one wide out. I mean, like I said, obvious run situation. And, you know, third and one. Now, not on this play, but I have personally, after watching this game really in full, I am actually a fan of Adrian Claiborne since he is from my home state. Um, he went to a high school full of very elite athletes, and his career, in my calm objective opinion, is very slept on because he doesn't have a lot of sacks, but he's an incredibly disruptive football player. The fact that he's still a free agent right now is a bit of a travesty, but that's another video and another conversation for another time. And there's nothing to do with this play. This is just personal aside. He's This man is a hell of a football player to watch. All of these guys are really good football players to watch. He's always been pretty solid. He was very solid throughout the playoffs. Is Miles Garrett. I'm glad, like I said, he's back with the Raiders. Uh, I don't I didn't really think too much of any of these people, but I'm not a Browns fan and he's also very solid so Those are and of those guys who I just mentioned he's not coming back and He's not coming back But the rest of these guys to my knowledge are coming back to the Browns this next season So that is a lot for the Browns to be excited for and they also have replaced this man with Jadavian Clowney some would say that's good, others might not feel the same way. That's another conversation, another video if you want to have it. But this is some good old goal line football. And it's not so much his technique, it's the fact that the one time he does get low, he does get some damn movement. And it's entertaining to watch. So let's just take a gander. I mean, that is, that is some displacement. So, in a perfect world, both of these two dudes are... It, like just like dogs they don't step on each other's feet because that hurts like absolute they step together they're shoulder to shoulder they get under this dude and they send this dude right back to the safety I mean they send this dude back right here is realistically probably about as good as it's gonna get but this is quite a position to be in as a defensive lineman because as you can clearly see Marquise Pouncey is definitely fighting for his leverage right here but these two dudes, man, they are they are moving him. And his base is not strong enough to actually handle that much weight and power getting thrown right at him. And, of course, Derek Watt just bounces it and dives for whatever he can get, which is a first down. So, this is a good play. I mean, this is, this is a good play, good old-fashioned football. Probably one of my favorite... Alejandro Villanueva plays I've watched of all of these all of the film that I've watched of him and there's a lot that I'm a lot more disgusted by but this was this was entertaining it was nice to see him get his pads down and just scrap because this is what makes Lyman Lyman we don't get credit for this we don't get praise for this but you blow in a three technique off the ball at least five yards Mind you, the ball, okay, the ball is right here. My man's ends up, my man's is lined up probably right here. He ends up about here. I mean, that's 
like it or leave it, that's that's fun to watch. Now he ends up right on right at the 50, damn near. Fun football, good stuff.